Hey guys, I really wanted to make this video because I had to suffer from one of Johnny's FD's latest uh, propaganda clips <laughs> where he's being propagandized to and lied to by uh, Operator Starsky here and we'll get into that in a moment but I just wanted to show you guys this uh, very blatant example of uh, just demonstrating how there are complete Nazis fighting in Ukraine and they are using the equipment of the West and it has been happening since before 2014 actually these the Azov battalion and all these um radical battalions were funded by western countries specifically to hate and destroy russians this was their purpose and they actually became stronger and more well equipped and better trained um than the regular ukrainian military they hold an Im immense power there and they did that because of the west the west funded them like they fund uh, terrorist troops in order to achieve uh, you know imperialist goals around um, around the world now this is an actual Forbes article and they use this picture of the tank and this comes from a full video and I'm gonna use um, I've got the video as well somewhere but I'm gonna use the new Atlas expose he did a great video on it he goes a bit more in depth than I do um, and I'll just play the full video Camera, from him uh, some of, them <laughs> of these guys some of them so you got people doing the Nazi salute here and from, uh, uh, seized from Russia and you've got this uh, another Nazi salute over and some here of them and you've got the German this is the German Nazi symbol that the Germans had on their tanks now you also see Ukrainians put just a white uh, white cross on it and that's kind of like let's not make it obvious that the Nazis you know for for morons who still believe it who still argue that there aren't Nazis and that there isn't a radical dis um, radical ideology there um, so it was just a white cross and so people can say oh it's just a white cross you know it means something totally different but this is what they actually mean so sent by the west the azov battalion doesn't give a shit so they just openly do it and as you're watching this video you it's More not nazi salutes it's not an m113 uh, it's actually a dutch ypr76 and of course you got the wolf angle here so this is the video where it comes from and this is the article the West post posted up, and I don't know if this is maybe somebody, if this is a way to normalize this, if uh, people see this video again, or if this is um, maybe it's someone on the inside actually, you know, trying to expose this and make it blatant. Maybe the person who posted this picture up um, or provided this picture actually knows what's going on and they don't like what's happening and they wanted to show some proof or I don't know why, but this was just one of those blatant examples. Now, there's absolutely no need for us to, to argue anymore about um, there being Nazis, like, uh, and, and uh, yeah, we shouldn't have to argue about it, but apparently it's still a thing, so, and I'll, I'll link this video for you guys to have a look. But let's get to the video of uh, Johnny FD. I mean, it didn't make sense, I don't really know. It starts with them discussing Johnny FD not going to the military and fighting on the front lines. And this is such a representation of America, isn't it? It's like, I, I, I'm not going to be good enough to fight on the front lines. So you guys can fight, but I'll, I'll, um, I'll fight on the, on the front line of uh, propaganda. I don't speak the language. I feel like I'd be more of a liability than an actual asset. Uh, and then I guess two things happened. One, first people said they, they wouldn't accept me anyways. Because uh, I don't have the experience. Uh, and then secondly, they said, you know, actually you are fighting on the front lines. But in, an, in the same war, but on a different front line. For, at, against Russian propaganda, against, you know, this BS that, that Russia is uh, waging. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Actually, it's one of the most important fights that you can have. Because uh, Russian propaganda is their main battle. Okay, so the first bullshit is coming out. So apparently the Russian propaganda is the main weapon of Russia. Not like all the rockets they send, not the nuclear arsenal or anything like that. It's the propaganda. I would say from the start of the war, I would say Russian propaganda is very, very lame. I would say Ukrainian propaganda is way better and way more intricate than Russian is. Like Russia does have propaganda and they exaggerate stuff. And I've pointed that out in my videos, but um it's it's boring <laughs> like it's uh it's not very good 
um, compared to the Ukrainian side. So that's my opinion on it. And it's definitely not the best weapon or main weapons, but we're trying to downplay um, the superiority of the Russian army compared to the Ukrainian army, which is pretty much non-existent without the support of the West. It always was. They, they invented this shit. As the war in Ukraine continues, the combat on a second battlefield is increasingly important, the fight for trust. Russia targets national and international audiences with a massive propaganda campaign that works on different levels. Let's take a look at some examples. First up, on Russian primetime state television, the Russian Duma deputy Alexander Borodai claims. Russia's pro well, that's, that's true. Uh, there are NATO troops fighting. Okay, they're not uh, officially wearing the NATO uniforms, but there are quote-unquote volunteers. And it's pretty obvious that you have uh, these advanced systems being controlled by troops from America and from NATO there. And at least they're helping with the uh, logistics or something like that. There are definitely NATO troops in Ukraine fighting. So I don't see how that's a lie. Propaganda is by no means intended to influence... <laughs> so that's already, that's them lying to you. It's any idiot can read between the lines and see that there are NATO troops in Ukraine on the ground. Only the Russian it's just, population. It's such an obvious Many truth. fakes are aimed at an international audience. Uh, about the context of Ukraine, the, the thing that we have been researching, many things are indicating to the Kremlin. I don't mean, worry, I won't make you suffer for this whole video. But the <laughs> actors who are supporting to to uh, the Kremlin, who are working for them, the Kremlin media, etc, etc. So, I think it's very important because you don't just protect Ukraine, you protect other people, other uh, countries by fighting Russian propaganda. So, it's, it, it's important. Mm -hmm. that Lately, we've seen a shift towards new topics, like the energy crisis in Europe and the sanctions against Russia. Some things are only slightly changed or taken out of context. Others are freely invented and are almost comical, like this claim from Russian state television. And this is, and this is what I mean, this is like hilarious and yeah, like Russia does this shit. But it's funny, it's not, um, it's not, this is what I mean about Russian propaganda being a bit like silly and lame. It's not, uh, Milky bacteria. it's sort of them taking the shit out, of, taking the piss out of Europe. <laughs> And even Russians, they're not going to take this stuff seriously. Like, there will be some, but there will be, like, the lowest common denominator. And I think I'll make a video about um, appealing to stupid people. And I say that in the most endearing terms. But there are, it's a fact of matter that there are stupid people like Johnny FD in the world that need to be propagandized to in order for them to choose, to choose the right path. Um... Like they ha they're, they're just people that need to follow something, they need to follow someone. It's a reality of, of, of life and you have to include that as part of your, um, what's it called, as part of your governance of, of any nation, of any country. You have to realize that there are basically um, people that aren't intelligent, that you have to tell them what to do and what to believe and what to follow. And you would hope in a country you would have more people that are educated and know what's going on and you would have people that are, that are just smart enough to follow at least the right people to actually follow the truth even if they can't comprehend it. And I'm saying stupid people, like I'm an idiot as well, like everybody is an idiot to an extent. There's always going to be someone smarter who we can take advice from, right? We can't think to us, for ourselves and we should think for ourselves to a certain extent, but there are just things we're not going to be able to know. So we have to listen to other people and we just have to have enough intelligence to listen to the right kind of people, basically. But anyway, she that's another topic I think to talk about. On the main news show, the presenter tells us that bacteria, scabies, mites, fleas and even lice are spreading in Europe right now because people don't wash themselves because of the energy crisis. Europe is rolling back to the Middle Ages, <laughs> the anchor says. Now this is like, like this would be a half truth because if you don't wash um, and things like that, like if you don't use electricity as much, like this could actually happen or be, it wouldn't be happening to like a huge extent, like Europe wouldn't be rolling back to the Middle Ages. It's obviously exaggerated propaganda, but I can see that being true to an extent. I can see that there will be people dying because they can't afford 
or they, they don't have access to electricity or things like this. Um, I can absolutely see that happening. I mean, it happens already. People die in, in uh, Western countries in Canada and things. You can look it up how many people die from um, from the cold or from other... Uh, yeah, of course, like prices going up it does has, have an yeah. effect on people's lives. So it's, I, I would say it's not false. I would say it's fucking very exaggerated and it is comical, but I, I wouldn't say it's false if people don't... So, don't um, if people stop showering, but it's likely that the um, things will go up. But again, it's like the lame side of Russian propaganda. Okay. Well, the longer that. I've been kind of exposed to, to this and the more I'm exposed to it, I'm starting to understand more. But I think in the beginning, I've always heard this word propaganda. And honestly, I always kind of laughed at it. I thought like, oh, you know, it's like who, who, falls, who falls for a poster or some, you know, who cares, right? But it, it actually makes a difference. Like if, Let's say there was nobody fighting Russian propaganda. How do you think this war would have changed? What do you think would be the difference? Do you want to know the main reason why Russia attacked? Tell me. It wasn't because they like uh, they they wanted to uh, invade to capture uh, territories and shit. It was because genetically modified birds, mosquitoes. They created specifically to kill Russians, dirty bomb, and all that shit. So, I don't know if he's just joking about it or if he knows the real reasons why Russia invaded. It was um, I, I made a video about it. It is the um, geographical position of Russia and Ukraine and the radicalization of Ukraine basically to hate Russians and the uh, str strategic location of the. Uh, warm water ports and um, basically all those really practical reasons why Russia actually did what they had to do. That is the real reason, but um, I, I'm hoping he knows, but that's the truth. <laughs> Потому что они желто-синие, украинские птицы. И всячески избегать поддержки, а еще лучше охотиться на снегирей. Потому что снегирь – это птица, символизирующая клятую Россию. And people yeah. believe this. Like no, no one believes that. Maybe like a very small percentage of people, but it's not why. Um, like it, it doesn't address any of the core topics, like the constant, for example, bombardment of Donbass that's ongoing now, and the killing of the civilians there. So they don't address that kind of thing. Um, they don't address any real topic because this in itself is this propaganda on the same level as the propaganda for the birds you know the killer birds and stuff it, it appeals to the lowest common denominator i.e uh <laughs> johnny fd it appeals to the fucking morons like him um and it doesn't make it makes them not think and believe that what they're doing is right that's that is, that's what it's there for so he's been propagandized too on the same level as that Russian propaganda clip they just showed, and he doesn't, he doesn't realize. It. <laughs> so he, they're not actually discussing any real topics of conversation, any real uh, reasons for the war or anything like that, or or the real uh, Nazi, uh, um, Nazi and radical, you know, r radical right wing nationalist, whatever you want to call it, element that's taking control of Ukraine, and we'll get to that in a little bit because this is where. He, he actually exposes um, himself a little bit. So we'll get I mean, first, I can't believe anybody would believe that. But people do. And because people, and you're talking about like average. You can kind of see in his body language as well. Like he knows he's full of shit right now. Because he's, well, I would say he's got some intelligence in him. And he's probably even justifying it. Like I feel like he's almost justifying the war. Um, to himself because he must have enough intelligence to understand what's happening so he's trying to convince himself he's on the right side that's how I feel he's what he's doing <laughs> and he definitely doesn't have any respect for Johnny FD in terms of um, <laughs> his level of intelligence that's the that's how I interpret the 
body language and stuff. But anyway, that's my job. Because they believe it, they pushed their, their government into starting the war, or I guess they allow the government to st start the war because maybe Putin has some other reasons why he wants. Maybe it's, you know, who knows, oil, gas, more land, more ambitions, more, you know, more power, whatever it is. Yeah. But be if, if Russian people, the normal citizens, didn't call for Russia 1, Channel, Channel 1 propaganda, they could not have invaded because people would say, what the hell are you doing? Yeah. And it's not only about their media, it's uh, about their whole culture. Actually, Russia has uh, numerous institutions that uh, work in, in this direction. They, like, everything they do is fueled by their music, their movies, of course. Uh, in, every mu in every movie they make since uh, 2000, I think. They have those, you know, uh, Ukrainian criminals, Ukrainian cookers, uh, some kind of Nazi banderivas, Ukrainian, I don't know, bandits. In the in the U.S., they're filmed uh, Brother 2, for example, famous yeah. Ru famous Russian gangster movie. Okay, so he says, okay, let's break down what he says. He says since 2000s, they had Ukrainian criminals in uh, every movie and he gives this example i can't remember where brother was made but i think i don't think it was made i think it was made before 2000 i'm not sure maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe it was made after uh but he gives this example specifically he doesn't give all these other examples of uh of uh russian movies having ukrainian criminals but okay so in this example, there's about two references. First of all, this guy is uh, a bit of an anti-hero to say the least. And all the characters in this movie are quite complicated and they have complicated um, ideologies. But he does, there are Ukrainian gangsters in this movie. And then he kind of jokingly, uh, there's basically two scenes. There's one where he jokingly uh, calls the guy a Banderist. And that means like a follower of Bandera. And you know, that could be, I don't know, that could be because maybe um, Ukrainians put monuments of literally Bandera in the cities and they build monuments to Nazi collaborators and war criminals in the cities and that's what they're doing like now they're tearing down uh, monuments of uh, Russia and building up monuments to Bandera and worshipping him and the, the, the whole like uh, call and response of Slava Ukraine and all the stuff it's, it comes from the UAN it comes from the Nazi collaborators in World War Two, the Ukrainian Nazi collaborators with Hitler, um, who wiped out a bunch of uh, Polish people and Jews. Now, this is an ongoing thing where Ukrainians are destroying Russian culture and they're, they're putting up monuments to Bandera and to guys like him. This is a great website, which I, which I will link, and this just goes through all the monuments that are there of um, Bandera and all the like plaques and everything to other Nazi collaborators everywhere and it's just an ongoing list and it keeps on going and going I'll link this to you guys so you can go through it if, if you're interested to see what's happening now this has been happening for a while since um, yes before 2014 even this has been slowly happening of course it ra ra revved up recently and they're using the war as an excuse to basically just um accelerate this uh transition from you know russian culture and we'll get into that in the video in a second into the ukrainian culture and by ukrainian culture they mean the western ukrainian culture and um their ancestors of supporting nazis and siding with the nazis against the soviet union at the time that's this is the heritage and this is the heritage they want to shove down the throats of uh, every Ukrainian. And you might, you know, start to wonder, well, maybe every Ukrainian doesn't want to worship Bandera and doesn't want to have, uh, you know, doesn't, doesn't want to get rid of, uh, you know, Pushkin monuments to Pushkin and have him replaced with a Nazi and then worship that Nazi. You know, that could be maybe one of the reasons why there are separatists in Ukraine, but of course that isn't addressed in the video. He just has this video of uh, a guy who's, again, an anti-hero, and they are making fun of Ukrainians in this movie, which is a great movie, by the way, you can watch it yourself. 
and see what you think and see if it's really attacking Ukrainians or not. I think there's way more different themes in it. And um, certainly this isn't this is <laughs> this is the last guy uh, we see as a as a hero in this movie, and he's the one who interacts with the Ukrainian gangsters. You know, anyway. <laughs> And things like that. So, uh, and it just gives one example, by the way. Numerous institutions that spread all this shit into their culture, and uh, they use their culture as uh, as a weapon again, their cultural expansion in Ukraine in the 90s, something that we are still fighting with. Uh, because, you know, I, I'm not against cultural expansion if it brings something beautiful. Uh, I'm not, uh, like, I don't have anything against, uh, in, like, foreign music, foreign books, movies, etc, etc. I mean, we're li literally at a Chinese restaurant in Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no Nazis here saying, no, yes. you, can't, you can't eat uh, Asian food. Yeah. Absolutely. But the and this is, <laughs> there's no... There's no Nazis yet <laughs> saying that, but l let's give it a few years, and we'll see what happens. But um, but again, this this is what I wanted to kind of get to, and you can watch a little bit more of it. I think I'll, I won't um, go for any more. He continues to justify this um, deletion of Russian culture, basically, and um, he kind of admits that yes, we are destroying and tries to justify propaganda as to Germany, but we are destroying. Russian culture and they have been banning Russian languages in school, teaching Russian language in school and um, uh, it's been happening and this is one of the major reasons why the people in the Donbass have been so uh, disenfranchised with the rest of Ukraine and a major reason why they wanted to separate from them because they don't want to worship but they're, uh, they want to keep speaking Russian, they want to have a Russian culture now, it was definitely a hard decision for them to make, knowing um, the radicalization of the Western Ukrainians and the Nazis there and what they, they were going to do to them and what they are doing to them. And thankfully, they did get the support of Russia to do it, but they're still suffering. But hopefully, the suffering is going to end soon. And I did make a post. Let's see if my post is still there. Or if it got, I think it got deleted. But I made the post that... Um, it's only a matter of time before the Nazis did, do get pushed uh, pushed away from Donbass, from bombing Donbass. Uh, he did delete my post, but that, that was the post I made. And um, yeah, it's true, they are getting pushed slowly. And as they're getting pushed out, of course, they're exaggerating the bombing uh, more and more. Um, now, Ukraine is a very complex country. There are different uh, factions there, and there are different uh, ideologies and ethnicities there. And uh, this is the attitude of the people who actually... So this is the attitude of a large portion of the Western Ukrainians who are in charge of the military now, who have a gun to Zelensky's head at the moment pretty much um he is getting help from the west as well but this is the real topics that should be discussed by people like johnny fd but they're not going to be discussed because this whole video is here to propagandize to western people to the lowest common denominator like people like johnny fd um they aren't here to discuss like actual topics they aren't here to discuss uh people like this man here who's a radical far-right leader in Ukraine. So this kind of stuff I don't want to discuss, and this comes straight from the horse's mouth. This guy had the support of about um, two million Ukrainians at the time, so th that's the reality of what Ukraine is, 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 is what's happening there. Um, 
this isn't this isn't the kind of thing he wants to discuss. This is the real propaganda he should be addressing, not some birds or things like that. Like this is this is my propaganda <laughs> that I'm putting out. So I want Astarsky to address this guy, and you know this is an obvious admitted Nazi with a huge following in Ukraine, who's I've shown to have uh, a hand in a lot of the propaganda you see, you know, with Warstash. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that's been coming out of Ukraine is actually orchestrated by him. Um, things like this video here, you can address. Mm. 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 Like, I still can't believe this, is, this video is actually, like, real, because it's so well produced, and it's hard to tell. But this is exactly the situation that was happening there between Zelensky and uh, the far-right nationalist uh, Nazi radicals. And this is the, the complex, shattered country that Ukraine is. You know, they try to simplify it for idiots, but this is actually what's there. They have these radicals who are against... Um, they, didn't, they don't even respect the Ukrainian government because the Ukrainian people are made up of a lot of people who actually want peace with Russia or want to be part of Russia. Like if, if Ukraine actually let uh, the fighting age, uh, men out, the fighting age men out of Ukraine, you will see how many people actually fuck off out of Ukraine and don't want anything to do with this war. Uh, <laughs> it will be a huge portion of the country. This is the kind of thing, like, this is the... Whether this actual video is... It is probably real, but this is the kind of uh, respect the Nazis had towards the president, the president of Ukraine. And he's trying to, like, look, look tough. So he's telling them to pull the weapons back, because they didn't have control of... Uh, of the, of the radicals there, so he was elected by people as a moderate, actually Zelensky, to stop this. But he he was just a puppet. He was scared himself of being murdered and killed by these guys. And these guys were out there bombing Donbass, and instead of dealing with these people, because again they were funded by the West, and this is how fucking convoluted and complex these things are. It's it's much easier to just talk about you know birds in Russia and killer birds and all this fucking nonsense has got nothing to do with anything um th th that's the real complexity is that you had these radicals that the government had no control over but continued bombing the citizens and civilians on donbass because they don't see them as human beings because they're fucking racist pieces of shit and the ukrainian government had to half rely on them because they were the most armed and the most uh well-trained, well-funded, most radical um, killers they had to hold Russia back. And so they used, they went on their side. And But then because they support them now, Russia went in completely. They had to go in completely. Um, and all this, like, all these complex topics that we can't have discussions about, um, obviously, Johnny FD doesn't want to actually think about it. Ты меня переводишь стрелку. Так я вам второй момент уже озвучил. Я вас услышал, вы сказали. Смотри, ты мне вообще не можешь никакие ультиматумы озвучивать, Денис. Ты не понял. Так я вам ультиматум. Я говорю, это были люди. Нам за тебя оружие забрать. При чем здесь? Я не понимаю, чем мы закончим сейчас разговор. So we've got videos like this, which we should be discussing, but you know, Johnny FD wants to talk about. The difference between Chinese restaurant and Russian movies is that Chinese don't use their restaurant as a way. Yeah. Yeah, if China started using this restaurant as a way to, like, say how communist the regime is superior than democracy, then, yeah, people would try to shut it down. But yeah. it's, like, just spreading <laughs> good food. Yeah. You know, and yeah. if you want to bring Russian food, like, go ahead. But don't bring your bullshit with it. Absolutely. And th that's the reason, for example, why uh, some of Russian media, uh, including their oppositional channels, are being closed uh, abroad. It's because... They use everything. So he's, he's trying to justify why, you know, Russian teachers were, people that taught Russian were basically lined up and shot by the Nazis and thrown into a mass graves, which we have videos of it, which we have, uh, uh, unfortunate, you know, the Nazis actually put videos up on, um, on their accounts showing this. <laughs> but other kind of stuff isn't um, shown, of course, in Western media. 
for you to see. Uh, and I thought this this was just interesting um, for to see to watch him justify um, the killing of Western culture, and you know, and in the end he shows all the people that got Ukraine in this video. He goes through all the people who uh, died in um, you know, quote unquote, defending Ukraine. And uh, this is the other thing about the attitude of of uh, Russia and Ukrainians. Like if you look at Russian. Uh, the most the majority of Russia of course there are different uh, attitudes out there but the majority of like Russians actually see and myself I see uh, I'm not Russian I'm originally from Ukraine I see this as a sad tragedy that all these people are dying for something stupid and that they don't even understand themselves or that they, they, they just believe falsely um, I think it's sad but the attitude of U Ukrainians of like Russians dying is they all rejoice they rejoice at the numbers going up you can look at any, any like um reddit forum or anything like that they they uh celebrate uh russians dying and uh that's the, that's another difference i wanted to point out between um just the attitudes of the ukrainians and the russians like the russians do see the ukrainians as their own people and they see this war as a tragedy that unfortunately needed to happen because of all these complex reasons not because of birds or any of that nonsense um, because of the complex reasons I want to discuss and I would like to see Johnny FD discuss but which will never actually happen especially considering he's in the thick of it now and he has to bullshit and lie and look like a fucking idiot uh, otherwise he will get a bullet or he will get a visit from uh, from the um, you know the what are they the KGB of Ukraine I forgot what they're called but that's what's going to happen to him, basically, if he doesn't outright get killed or have a missile accidentally land on his property <laughs> and he becomes a martyr for Ukraine. So, OK, I think I'll stop this video here. I hope you enjoyed what I said. Um, yeah. And that's all I, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can if I <laughs> can be bothered making more videos. But watching this actually did encourage me because what he said at the start is true. But we are finding an information war. And there are just people that I feel like that are doing better things like the new Atlas out there. And um, they just put things together much better than I do and have much more uh, much more motivation to do videos. But, you know, I'll do what I can as well in this war. And hopefully you guys enjoy the videos I do put out. Okay, guys, all the best and thank you for listening.